Hello, my name is Yorkie and welcome to the In-Depth Track Guide series, a new series that I'm going to be doing on the channel for Assetto Corsa Competizione. But it's not a series that is totally brand new to the channel. I used to do this for the old F1 Codemasters games back in the day when I very first started my channel. And they seem to be quite popular, so I'm bringing them back here for ACC, seeing as there's a fairly limited number of tracks. But the whole premise is to basically give you guys all the knowledge, all the secrets, and an in-depth look at the circuits to get yourselves fully up to speed. Now, if you haven't already guessed by the background footage, the first track that we're going to be looking to kick off the series with is indeed Monza. With 3.6 miles of high speed straights and 11 turns, the circuit lends itself to a low downforce setup, so this should be a fairly simple and easy one to ease ourselves into the series with. Kicking off with each episode, we'll start with the pit entry, and here at Monza it is extremely short. Pretty much as soon as you get past the dotted white lines at the pit entry, you want to be hard on the brakes, getting the speed down to 60 kilometers an hour, down into first gear and engaging the pit speed limiter before you get to the pit speed limit line, which is just at the end of the tyre stack at the entry to the pit lane itself. When you come to exiting the pit lane, you're looking for this marshal post that's here at the end of the pit lane and also the pit exit board. Once you get to there, you can disengage the limiter and accelerate out of the pit lane. But as you do so, you want to be staying to the right hand side of this white line that comes out the exit here. And then once you get to the white line that spans the width of the circuit, that's where you want to be getting hard on the brakes and slowing down ready for turn one. Under normal racing conditions, you will be approaching turn one though at the highest speed that you'll reach around the circuit. And you're looking for your braking point about 160 meters before the corner just here. You're going to be braking hard from sixth gear, shifting all the way down into first before flinging it into the Retifilio chicane. Your very first apex that you're going to be looking to clip is just here and you'll be hitting that in first gear. The key for this first turn, however, is the fact that you want to be staying on the green, white and red curving and avoiding the large orange turtle curb that is on the inside of the apex there. Hitting that too hard will bounce the car and unsettle it and will ruin your run and approach in towards turn two. Approaching the second corner then, you want to be lurking in the middle of the circuit. It should be a short spur of the throttle between the two corners and then just maybe a very quick dab of the brake before flinging it left in towards this second apex here. Once again, you want to be staying on the red, white and green curbing and staying off the large orange sausage curb that runs along the insiders. Once again, touching and clipping that will bounce and unsettle the car and ruin your exit. Now, speaking of which, the exit from turn two is going to be key for the next part of the circuit. The curb itself is serrated and just beyond it is a flat piece of green painted tarmac, which you can run, although do be cautious because just beyond that is the gravel. In the dry, you can run this curb pretty much no problem. However, in the wet, you'll be wanting to avoid it as it will heavily affect your traction coming off the corner. Turn three then is the famous Curva Grande, and you want to be getting as close to the apex curve as you possibly can, ideally without touching it, just to minimize the risk of potentially unsettling a car. Now in the GT3 cars in the dry, you'll be able to do this corner completely flat out, no issue whatsoever. However, in the wet, depending on how much downforce you're running at the rear of the car and how much surface water there is on top of the tarmac, you may need to lift off the throttle a little bit just to try and keep the rear end planted and a little bit more settled and stop the car from spinning around at high speed. The Della Roggia chicane occupies corners four and five, and this is your braking zone here where you'll be jumping on the brakes at the 150 meter board and shifting all the way down into second gear for turn four. Once again, just like turn one, you'll be wanting to clip the green, white and red curbing here on the inside and you'll be wanting to stay off the large orange turtle curb as again hitting that will bounce and unsettle the car and ruin your approach in through turn five. The right hander here will once again be in second gear with a short spur of the accelerator between the two corners before lifting slightly as you come through the apex and then getting hard on the accelerator out through the exit. And once again, you'll be wanting to avoid the large orange sausage curb on the inside there as that will unsettle the car and ruin the traction coming off the corner. 
The XL Turn 5 also has a sawtooth curb with a patch of green painted tarmac on the exit and just like the first chicane you can run this no problem in the dry however in the wet you will want to be staying off this curb to avoid any potential traction loss. Between turns 5 and turn 6 you have a relatively short straight before we reach the first of two right handers the Lesmo curves and the first of which turn 6 is a long medium speed right hander. Your start to the braking zone is pretty difficult to spot because there's very few reference points around here but it's around about the 50 meter mark where you'll be shifting down into third gear and chucking the car in. You'll be wanting to hook up the apex at this point here and stay off the curb on the inside as it dips down into a bit more of a trough. At this apex point you'll also be wanting to jump back hard on the accelerator getting pretty much full throttle straight away and running the car out to the exit. Out here you'll find a sawtooth curb and just beyond that is a load of astroturf. You can make full use of this area in the dry, no issues whatsoever. However, in the wet you'll be wanting to avoid both the astroturf and also the curb as it will hurt your traction off the corner. The breaking point for the second Lesmo turn 7 is going to be just here at the 50 meter board and you'll be wanted again to shift down into third gear for the right hander which is shorter and a little bit tighter than the first Lesmo corner. Now your apex here in third gear is typically going to be just off the inside curb. The corner is quite nicely cambered and the closer that you get to that inside curb the more the car is going to hook in. However there is quite a big trough and also the green painted tarmac area just beyond the inside curb there and if you catch that awkwardly it can heavily unsettle some cars. However some cars will deal with that inside curb perfectly fine and you can run it if you're confident in the car's ability and the car setup allows you. In the wet though you'll be wanting to stay off this curb entirely. On the exit of turn 7 we once again have a sawtooth curb with some astroturf just beyond it and you can run the astroturf however taking too much this time may see yourself exploring the track limits a little bit too much and possibly incurring a penalty so venture out here with caution. Again in the wet avoid where possible will ruin your traction off the corner. After a decent length straight that dips down underneath the old Monza Oval, we come to turn 8, 9 and 10, the Variante Ascari Chicane. The entry to turn 8 will see you braking round about here about 130 to 120 metres before the corner at the end of the barrier where it is painted orange. You'll be shifting down through the gears, down into third, chucking the car in and you'll be looking to apex on the inside kerb. The curb itself is pretty low and the sleeping policemen that are there on the inside don't really affect the car too much in the dry so you can take liberties here and really attack this curb to your heart's content. However in the wet the amount of curb that you can take here will depend on the car and your car's setup. Coming through turn 9 typically you'll be wanting to stay just off the curb but as close to it as possible It's a trough curb and on the inside you've got some sleeping policemen which can bounce and unsettle the car so take caution if you are running over those. But you'll be wanting to take this right hand up near enough flat out. You may need to play with the throttle a little bit to try and open up the entry to turn 10 of which your apex is going to be here. And again you can hammer this curb with your heart's content providing that you are running the wheels over the curb. If you go and straddle the entirety of the car over the curb the floor will be smacking against that sleeping policeman and that will bounce and unsettle the car. So try not to take too much liberty here and also when it comes to the wet you'll be wanting to stay off of this curb entirely. The exit of turn 10 is just like the two Lesmos, a sawtooth curb with astroturf beyond it. At the latter part of the exit you do have unpainted tarmac which you can use to your benefit as well. Although venturing too far out here will see you exploring the legal limits of the circuit and potentially picking yourself up a penalty. With 10 corners done and dusted there is just one left, turn 11 Curva Parabolica. The braking point for this final corner begins at the 100 meter board and you'll be getting hard on the brakes here before slowing the car down into third gear and guiding it into the final right hander. As you come into the turn you'll be wanting to clip the apex just shy of the inside curb at this point here where you'll begin accelerating away and off out of the turn and by the time you reach the end of the inside curb 
you'll want to be at 100% throttle application and letting the car run out wide to maximise your speed onto the start finish straight and the fastest straight on the track. Coming out through the exit itself, you'll be wanting to run the exit curb here in the dry. It's a sawtooth curb with some astroturf just beyond it. You can run that no problem in the dry conditions. However, in the wet, you will be wanting to avoid this. And you'll also need to be short shifting up through the gears and balancing the throttle, trying to get the best traction and the best drive you possibly can off the corner. So now that we've broken all 11 turns down with their braking and apex points, let's take a look at a lap at full racing speed so you can see the lines, the braking points and the apexes being put into practice. So there we have it, a solid lap having been put in. I just want to cover one last thing before we close this episode off. And that is that the breaking points used here in this episode are just a guide. They are not entirely fixed. They will vary depending on the car, the car setup, the track conditions and the weather conditions. So be prepared that in some instances and in some cases you may need to be braking earlier than shown here in the video. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this first episode to the new series or learned something new, please give the video a like and share it. If you are new here and want to see more of the in-depth track guide series, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification. That way you'll be alerted to each new episode and also the other content that I put up here on the channel. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, have fun, stay safe and take care.